Soya Izashiro, or as he is now formally known as Kimpachi Izashiro, was the former captain of the 11th Division, and most importantly, he held the title as the 8th Kimpachi. This was after he had killed Kimpachi Koryashiki. As a character, Izashiro has a rich history and he has a clear goal. He features within the Bleach two part novel series Spirits Are Forever With You. Within these novels, we learn about his broken bankai, his ambitions prior to his imprisonment within Muken, and of course, the several battles that he has with Kimpachi Zaraki. In my last character analysis video, I spoke about Korea Shiki's character, and in this video, we will be covering everything that we know about Soya Azashiro. I'm speaking about these novel exclusive characters because Spirits Are Forever With You is collaborating with Bleach Brave Souls, so a lot of you will be seeing these characters for the first time, and hopefully, these videos will help you to understand their role within the Bleach lore. So, without further delay, let's dive into my breakdown and analysis of Soya Azashiro. <laughs> Before the video begins, only 20% of the people who actually watch my content are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy these videos, then subscribe and stick around for more content just like this. Now let's get back to the topic of the video. Soya Azashiro appears exclusively within the novel Bleach Spirits Are Forever With You, which was released on the 4th of June 2012. In terms of appearance, he has long black hair which is tied back in a ponytail and held in place with a golden band. He wears a similar golden band around his waist. He wears these accessories to represent his noble lineage, as he is from the noble Azashiro family. This family wasn't as highly ranked as the Shihoin household or the Kuchiki household, but rather it was on the level of the Kyoraku family and the Omaida family. I'll cover more about the noble Azashiro family when I talk about his backstory. In terms of appearance, he does resemble Byaki Akuchiki, and even when it comes to his personality, he isn't all too different. Throughout his appearance within the novel, he has a clear direction, and he doesn't mix his words. This is demonstrated after he leaves Muken and interrupts an emergency meeting held by the head captain. He clearly states his goals and how he means to achieve them, demonstrating that the 250 years or so that he spent within Muken hasn't changed his ambition. Azashiro is first introduced to us as a strange figure who challenges the 7th Kimpachi Kuriyashiki to a duel. At the time, he was a young man who appeared to not even wield a Zanpakuto, but despite this, he was able to defeat and eventually kill Kuriyashiki just moments after their duel had begun. This of course is credited to his equally as strange and mysterious Zanpakuto. What we'll do now is talk about the backstory of Azashiro and explain how he had acquired his Zanpakuto and the unique abilities that it possesses. And then we'll talk about all of the moments leading up to his imprisonment within Muken and then his escape and eventual involvement within the current timeline of the Bleach story. As I've mentioned, Soya Azashiro was born into the noble Azashiro family. This was over 250 years before the current timeline of Bleach, and in that time, the Soul Society was far more brutal than it is today. All of the noble families were in a constant struggle of power with each other, and any family who showed a sign of weakness or had struggled to keep up with the competition would end up falling for the tricks that the other noble families would play upon them. Something like this had happened to the Azashiro family, when they would be falsely accused of crimes and sentenced to be executed. Those who were weak were placed before hollows, while those who have enough strength to face off against hollows were sent into the Dangai. This sentence didn't stop the Azashiro family, as they continued to survive thanks to its members being very proficient in swordsmanship and Kido. But as the generations went along, the Azashiro family had become complacent and weak. They started to value wealth over combat ability, and the young Soya Azashiro was following in the footsteps of his family. On the other hand, his older sister was an exception, and she had desired to become a Shinigami, wanting to preserve her family's honour. She was able to convince Soya to join her in her ambition. Not too long after this, the Izashiro family would once again be tricked by being blamed for a crime that they did not commit. The entire family was sentenced to death by fighting against Hollows. Almost all of the Izashiro family had been killed, with Soya and his sister being the only survivors. When he was ordered to fight the Hollows, his sister intervened and sacrificed herself. After she was able to kill the final hollow, but during her battle she was fatally wounded and ended up dying along with the hollow. Now Soya Azashiro was the only surviving member of his family. Initially the nobles had agreed to allow any survivors to live, but predictably they had broken their promise and had brought forward more hollows to kill the young boy. But it was at this moment that a shift occurred within Soya Azashiro's mentality. Growing up he had assumed that there was no need to acquire power and to learn swordsmanship. If he had seeked financial wealth then he would be able to resolve any one of his issues 
issues but the situation that he has found himself in here no amount of money will be able to help him Kubo draws an excellent sketch of a young Soya Izashiro who is cowering on the floor fearful as he watches his sister die in front of him her final words to him were a request as she tells him to become a strong Shinigami this traumatic incident had resulted in his Zanpakuto spirit Urazakuro being manifested for the first time his Zanpakuto spirit was able to manipulate the reishi around them thus resulting in the slaughter of all of the nearby nobles as well as the hollows this had allowed Soya Izashiro to escape into Rokongai the hollows that had survived Urozakuro's attack ended up being blamed for the deaths of the nobles and so they were executed thus allowing Soya Izashiro to escape and lead a quiet life for the time being as he remembers his sister's final request while wandering he had decided to carry out his sister's request to become a Shinigami thanks to the advice of his Zanpakuto spirit he had decided to acquire the title of the strongest Kimpachi by challenging none other than Kimpachi Koryashiki. This was 250 years before the defeat of Aizen. At the time, the 7th Kimpachi was accompanied by Shunsui and his members of the 11th Division, as they were celebrating in Rokongai after they had defeated a horde of hollows. When the young man had arrived, his Zanpakuto spirit, Urozakuro, had confirmed that the man standing before him was indeed his target, Koryashiki. Azashiro had ended up challenging him to a battle to the death. The winner would inherit the title of Kimpachi. Shunsui from the get-go had sensed that there was something suspicious about him. Most notably, he wasn't carrying a Zanpakuto, yet he had wanted to battle one of the captains of the Gotei 13. He had ended up warning his friend and fellow captain to be careful, but despite this warning, Koryashiki had accepted the challenge and had asked for Shunsui to act as a witness of their duel. Immediately after their battle had begun, the 7th Kimpachi had found himself being cut up by a tornado of blades from within his body, as his blood begins pouring out of all of the wounds. While the 7th Kimpachi had started to bleed out, the members of the 11th Division had refused to accept this defeat, stating that Izashiro had cheated. When they were about to attack Izashiro, Kuriyashiki had activated his Shikai and pushed them back. His final request to his subordinates was to honor the victor of the battle and to accept his loss. Izashiro would now inherit the title of Kimpachi and he would be their new captain, as per the rules of the Kimpachi lineage. Izashiro did note that if Kuriyashiki had used his Bankai from the very get-go, then he may well have won. But because of the devastating power of the 7th Kimpachi's Bankai, it would have most likely endangered his subordinates, and this is why he didn't use it. Zashiro had referred to Kuriyashiki as being foolish for wanting to protect his subordinates, as this was his weakness that had resulted in his defeat and ultimate death. This demonstrates that Zashiro will do anything, even kill people near to him for the pursuit of his goal and desire. Before dying, Kuriyashiki had advised Zashiro not to make the same mistakes that he did and to hold back against an opponent, because that is what it means to be a Kimpachi. So after acquiring the title of the strongest, what is there left for Azashiro to do? What are his goals now? We learn that he had desired to transform the criminals within Rukongai into strong soldiers by altering their minds through psychosurgery. This is a real and very taboo medical procedure that involves removing parts of the brain that are linked to mental illness in order to improve a patient's symptoms. While frowned upon in most developed countries, there are still areas of the world that practice this strange medical procedure. Azashiro had wanted to operate on the criminals and remove parts of their brain in order to transform them into obedient soldiers who would work under him within the 11th division. When he had revealed this plan to the Central 46, they had laughed in his face. In a spiteful and humiliating manner, they had challenged him to go ahead with his ridiculous plan, as they didn't expect him to find any success with it. But how wrong they were, because Azashiro was able to successfully operate upon the criminals of Rukongai, and he was able to reform them into obedient, strong soldiers. His success was an overwhelming I told you so to the Central 46, and they didn't take too kindly to Azashiro after he had proven them wrong. In addition to this, Azashiro was able to make these soldiers loyal to him. The Central 46 didn't agree to this, as they believed that loyalty is reserved to them and to the noble families, clearly proving that they don't consider the Azashiro family to be a noble one anymore. With regret that they had allowed Azashiro to carry out his plans, they had framed him with false charges, stating that he had altered the souls of criminals without permission, and had made him out to be a criminal, but he didn't care too much about their decision, as he had continued on with his plans. Azashiro had gone as far as to even fight against the Gotei 13, and he was able to hold his own because of the ridiculous power of his Zanpakuto. Azashiro had ended up surrendering and had given up on his plans after he could sense that the Zero Division were arriving to apprehend him. He was disheartened to learn that even the Soul King disapproves of his plans. After being apprehended, Azashiro was sentenced to 19,500 years of imprisonment within Muken, while initially Azashiro 
Kuro's plans involved reforming criminals within Rukongai, they had quickly escalated as he wanted to carry out his duty as a Shinigami. He desired to purify all of the hollows within Huekomundo, as well as wanting to alter the souls or the brains of every human within the real world. He wanted to do this via psychosurgery in a similar method that he had used on the criminals. He wanted to eliminate the emotions that arise within humans that end up leading to the birth of hollows. After a human dies and its soul lingers within the real world for too long, this soul ends up being corrupted through emotions of guilt, regret or sadness. These emotions manifest because of their attachment to their prior life. If he is able to remove these emotions via psychosurgery, then it will prevent the birth of any more hollows. So Hueco Mundo will no longer be populated with hollows and after removing these emotions, there won't be any need for people to go to hell. Now this goal of Azashiro's does not change for the duration of Spirits of Forever with you. So Azashiro had only been a captain of the 11th division for about a year before he was imprisoned within Muken. Now before we talk about Azashiro's role within the current timeline of the story, I want to talk about his Zanpakuto because it is really fascinating. Like I mentioned before, his Zanpakuto is called Urozakuro and it is the only blade within the entire Soul Society that we know that is in a constant Bankai state. This incredibly powerful and broken Bankai is able to fuse with all of its surroundings, thus allowing Azashiro to control them. This ability extends to everything, even including the earth and the air. We learn that Azashiro's inner world is constantly fused with the outside world, thus making it difficult to pinpoint his exact location. When Azashiro uses his power to fuse his entire being with portions of the Serete, it results in the Serete becoming an extension of himself. This allows him to use his senses within the area that he is controlling, explaining how he is able to hear conversations that are happening when he isn't in the same room. This is because he can merge his senses with the air of the Serete, thus allowing him to see, hear and know about everything that is going on in the area that he controls. We learned that the woman that was accompanying Azashiro, who had guided him to the 7th Kimpachi, was in fact his Zanbakuto spirit Urozakuro, and it seems as though only he is able to see her, and she is constantly with him. With his powers, he is also able to appear in and out of space, thus giving him an ability that is similar to teleporting over vast distances. Now, Uzashiro Zanbakuto has two key abilities that we need to know about. The first is Seite Yugo. This is the ability that he had used to kill Kuriyashiki with a single attack. It allows him to merge with the body of his victim and to destroy them from the inside out. Another ability that he has is called Utsusu. This grants him with the ability of creating several copies of his mouth and hands, as well as any other body part that he wishes. He can conjure up these copies in different locations all at once, and in doing so he is able to summon hundreds of high level Kido spells all at the same time. He uses this ability during his battle against Kimpachi, when he summons several Ito Castle spells against him. It's understandable to see how this overpower technique would allow him to easily overpower a large number of enemies, but as with every Zanbakuto and Bankai, they all have some sort of weakness, and Zashiro Zanbakuto is no exception to this. Now because of Urozakuro's power, he is able to fuse his body with any Reishi attacks, thus making it very difficult to hurt him via these types of attacks. But because of this, it makes him very vulnerable to abilities that are focused on absorption. Any ability that sucks in Reishi is very dangerous to Azashiro. Now because Azashiro Zanbakuto allows him to extend his senses throughout any area that he is controlling, he is able to overcome a formidable Zanbakuto like Kyoka Suigetsu, which of course is the power of complete hypnosis. When the two of them had met within Muken, Aizen had admitted to him that his Zanbakuto would be useless against Azashiro. This meeting between the two of them had occurred during the 17 months after Aizen's defeat. Initially, while in Muken, Aizen was completely sealed for an entire year, unable to see, hear, speak and even move thanks to being tied down to Chesama. But Azashiro on the other hand was able to move freely within Muken. Through using his Zanbakuto's power, he was able to remove the seals placed upon Aizen's mouth, ears and his left eye. Aizen was able to immediately recognize Azashiro once he could see again, knowing that he was a former captain of the 11th division, as well as recognizing him as the 8th Kimpachi. While speaking to Azashiro, Urozakuro had advised him to take Aizen's Hokyoku, but he had refused, stating that he has no interest in it. He simply wants to ask Aizen about the outside world. Aizen responds by saying that Azashiro is able to see the entire Serete while being in Muken. He is a man who even Kyokasuigetsu would be ineffective against. What possibly could he reveal to Azashiro about the outside world that he doesn't already know about? Azashiro then refines his question by asking about the real world and how Aizen was defeated by Ichigo, as he had expected him to be defeated by the Zero Division. He also goes on to ask 
Aizen about the one who currently holds the title of Kimpachi. Azashiro states that he was surprised that Kimpachi was able to defeat the Ispada Noitra, despite the fact that he had struggled against Shikai Ichigo. Aizen responds by saying that trapping the captains and Kimpachi in particular within Hueco Mundo was necessary. He states that out of all of the captains, Yamamoto and Kimpachi would pose the biggest threats to his plans. So he had measures in place to deal with the two of them. Now this in fact is shocking information to learn, that Aizen had wanted to avoid an encounter with Kimpachi during the fake Karakura Town arc. And this is because Kimpachi's power wildly fluctuates. And this is something that is explained by Aizen when he answers Azashiro's question about how Kimpachi was able to defeat Noitara despite having struggled against Shikai Ichigo. He reveals that when Kimpachi battles, he desires to not kill his opponent. He does so by subconsciously matching his Reatsu with the enemy, because Kimpachi loves to fight on the brink of death. The Spirits of Forever With You novels were released before Unohana's battle with Kimpachi, and this reveal within the novel was something that the author Ryogo Narita was able to pick up about Kimpachi's character through the subtle foreshadowing that Kubo uses in the manga. Kubo was actually shocked when he had read this during the review of the novel, as it was something that he had planned to write about within the Thousand Year Blood War arc, and it was actually a spoiler for the upcoming events of the manga. Narita had even offered to remove this from the novel, especially if it was going to spoil fans, but Kubo had insisted that it remains within the novel, as it proves how well versed Narita is with Kubo's work, and why he was the right pick to create these novels that expand upon the world and lore of Bleach. Coming back to Azashiro's character, he was able to escape Muken thanks to the thread-like abilities of the Aranka Roka Paramiya. The Shinigami are immediately alerted after he escapes, as the head captain holds an emergency captain's meeting. The escaped prisoner is referred to as Kimpachi Azashiro. Of the captains who are present, several recognize the name, like Unohana, Shunsui, Shinji, and even Kensei. This meeting ends up being interrupted by the arrival of Yoriichi, who reveals that she had learned about Azashiro Zanpakuto after she had spoken to his Zanpakuto spirit herself. This was 100 years ago when Urozakuro had presented herself before Urahara and Yoriichi, while Urahara was training with the Tenshin Tai in order to manifest his own Zanpakuto spirit into the real world. Urozakuro had used the Tenshin Tai in order to appear before them, as it reveals her identity to them and the abilities that she possesses. After learning about Urozakuro and all of her abilities, including the extension of the senses across any area you control, and the likelihood that Azashiro has been listening in on their conversation this entire time, he ends up interrupting the meeting and appearing before the captains. He reveals that his goal of wanting to perform psychosurgery on all of the humans has not changed, and he has a method to perform this procedure on every single human across the entire world within a short span of time, as long as he can secure the help of the Aranka Roka Paramiya. The range of Azashiro's Bankai appears to be limited by his Reatsu, but with the help of this female Aranka, he will be able to extend the reach of his Bankai and be able to perform the procedure on a larger number of humans at the same time. This is because Roka Paramiya's ability is to transfer Reatsu between people, meaning that she can amplify Azashiro's Reatsu, allowing him to successfully complete his plan of ridding humans of the emotions that would transform them into hollows. After revealing this, Azashiro disappears. The Gotei 13 mobilize in order to locate the Aranka and to prevent her meeting with Azashiro. This is where the head captain orders Kimpachi Zoraki to go to the real world in order to capture the Aranka. Accompanied by Ikaku and Yumichika, he enters into the Dangai, headed for Karakura Town. But just as they see the entrance into the real world, Soya Azashiro appears before them, stopping them from progressing further. After introducing themselves, the first battle between Azashiro and Kimpachi begins. Kimpachi wastes no time by swinging his sword into the air, but Azashiro avoids the attack by disappearing into thin air, thanks to his Bankai. After he re-emerges, Kimpachi exclaims that if his opponent can hide in the air, then he will have to cut the air to hurt him. Azashiro first-hand witnesses Kimpachi's insatiable hunger for battle, and decides to use his ability Utsusu, which I had spoken about earlier, as he summons several hands and mouths that surround Kimpachi, and begin chanting several Kido spells that all strike him at once. Despite being hurt, Kimpachi appears to have survived the barrage of attacks, admitting that he may have underestimated his opponent. But by the time that he gets ready to fight again, Azashiro has already left, thus ending their first encounter. After their battle, Azashiro was trying to locate Roka through fusing with the air of Karakura Town, but he was unable to locate her. He then turns his attention towards Kimpachi again, who was taking part in another battle within a Garganta over Karakura Town. Azashiro and Kimpachi would begin their second 
second battle within this very Garganta, as he wonders how Kimpachi's Reatsu is able to become so much stronger within a short space of time. This is something that even Kimpachi is unable to explain. And so, beginning their second battle, Azashiro closes his eyes and summons several Gigai around Kimpachi, as he controls them to chant one of the most powerful spells, Hado number 96, Ito Kaso, the very Hado spell that Yamamoto had used against Aizen during the Fate Karakura Town arc. Kimpachi is trapped and he has nowhere to go as he takes on several of these attacks all at once. Azashiro had assumed that he had defeated Kimpachi, but after turning around, he witnesses that his opponent has miraculously survived the attack. This leads to Azashiro becoming desperate as he fuses his body with multiple objects to attack the seemingly invincible Kimpachi. He is left with no choice but to use Seitai Yugo, the very attack that had swiftly taken out Kuriyashiki. He fuses with Kimpachi's body and attempts to crush his lungs but to no avail. Even this seems to be ineffective against Kimpachi. Izashiro, who is despairing now against his powerful opponent, disappears into the air. But Kimpachi strikes the air with a powerful attack that throws Azashiro out of the Garganta, hurtling down into Karakura Town. It is here where he finally finds Roka Paramiya, who is being defended by Don Konunji. He has little time to fuse with Roka before Kimpachi returns. But at this time, Azashiro is moved as he witnesses Don Konunji protect the female Aranka. It reminds him of his childhood when he was too weak to do anything to protect his older sister. But Don Konunji on the other hand, despite being weak, is still willing to protect Roka. This touching display leads to Azashiro abandoning his goal, most likely because these feelings of despair, guilt and sadness that he wants to rid from humans are the very emotions that have shaped his character. He feels all of these emotions when it comes to his older sister. And understandably, if these emotions didn't exist, then the death of his sister would be meaningless to him. When Kim Kimpachi appears to deliver the final blow against him, Azashiro doesn't even defend himself as he accepts the attack and allows himself to be cut by Kimpachi. After this final attack, Kimpachi had apprehended him and had taken him to a Senkaimon, where Azashiro would regain consciousness. Kimpachi then asks him to continue their battle. Azashiro, who appears to have given up, doesn't seem to be too interested in fighting, but he still honours Kimpachi's request as he asks his Zanpakuto Urozakaru to return to its Shikai state, where we see his Zanpakuto which looks no different to an ordinary blade. They both introduce themselves as the captains of the 11th division as they clash during their third and final battle. Kimpachi returns from the Senkaimon appearing to have been the victor, and after this battle, Azashiro is eventually sent back to Muken, where he meets with Aizen and tells him that the next time that he sees him, he will have improved so much that he will appear to be a different person. Aizen looks forward to seeing the results of Azashiro's training. After he returns to his prison cell, he uses a drug on himself that makes him perceive every second as hundreds of years. And this is similar to what Mairi had used against Xyloporo. He does this because he wants to be alone so that he can train himself to be a stronger Shinigami. And this story is now tying back to the final request of his older sister. And when he asks his Zanpakuto spirit Urazakaru to reveal herself, she appears without the bands that were covering her face. As he sees his Zanpakuto spirit's face for the first time, as he states that she resembles his older sister. Now this brings an end to Azashiro's story. While I have tried to explain as much as I can about his character, this is as much as I can share, since the novels he features within are Japanese only, so I've had to rely on fan translations and summaries of the events that occur within Spirits of Forever with you. But I feel like through everything that I've spoken about, we have a solid understanding of this character, his goals and backstory, as well as the abilities of his Zanbakdo. This video in large part was made possible thanks to Simo Urohara, who had covered a lot of the Spirits of Forever with you material in his videos. So definitely check them out if you want to learn more about the novels. As for this video, did you enjoy hearing me talk about novel exclusive characters? And do you want more videos on characters who feature within Bleach novels, like Can't Fear Your Own World? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and continue the discussion about Azashiro too. Did you like his character and would you have liked to see him return during the Thousand Year Blood War arc? I genuinely can't wait to read all of your comments. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach analysis video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.